السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ونيفر يو ار وريفر يو ار توداي از ماي ثيرد ستوري اباوت يقين اند ذيس هابند ان ذا انترناشونال ايربورت اوف تورنتو ان كندا ان ابريل ماي 2007 اي واز ترافلينج ذير تو اتند اور فيرست ايفر ميتينج اوف اسلامك ليف بورد اوف دايركتور ان كندا اند اي واز ستوبد ان ذا ايربورت از يوجوال اند ذا اوفيسر توك ماي باسبورت اند ستارت تو ميك ا سيرش اباوت ماي نيم اون ذا Uh, uh, internet and took him an hour or two hours, or two hours and he kept searching, searching, searching at every time come and ask me stupid question and go back, come and stupid question and go back and I told him it's not w- w- and what you're bringing is not me it's maybe it's many people about the organization, about my name, about whatever it is anyway at the end of the day by the evening he told me I have been reading reports from the state about you that's why I'm going to keep you tonight. I said, why? He said, this is the report. They said about you that on that day, you were in Albania training uh, extremist organization and in Egypt training extremist. I said, I've never been to Albania for the last six or seven years. I said, I could believe you because you don't look like a criminal, but this is what's written in the report. And now I will have to go and call my supervisor to give you the decree or to tell you our a, a decision about you. He brought his supervisor and one sentence. He said, are you going to be cooperative with us or not? I said, okay, I am going to be. Because if not going, because in their view at that time, in 2000, if you are not cooperative, they lock you in forever and then they send you to Guantanamo. This is the worst case scenario. I said, what's happening to me now? He said, we're going to take you to the prison. I said, prison? What prison? What, what crime I have done? This is the decision. They search everything in my bag. They let me to take off my laces, my shoelaces, because shoelaces could mean that I can strangle myself with my shoelaces. And they have a pin, a stomach leaf pin, and actually my jacket, and they took it out to put it in the safe in case if I use it to harm myself and to claim that actually they have done this harmful things to myself. I said, okay, fine. They put handcuff in my hand and put my hand behind my back. It was very painful. And this was actually, I feel sorry for every individual being arrested and had the handcuff behind his back. And they took me to another station to prepare me to go to the Uh, to go to jail, 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 J-A-I-L. And in this uh, station, uh, there was an Afro-Canadian young man looked at my face and said, you don't look like a criminal for me. What's your problem? I told them that I represent a charity organization. Oh, charity organization, they stay for, for a long time and people forget about them. Please, brother, when you enter the prison, two things to do. First of all, actually don't criticize or antagonize the uh, prison officers. Never. Never. The second thing, I will take your hand cuff off and I'll put it from the front to give to become less painful to yourself. I feel sorry for you and I wish that actually uh, they can release you as soon as possible. I went there. And uh, when I looked at the prison officers, really they looked like very aggressive people, very well built, tall, and, 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 and. And they stripped me naked, searched me from my back and from everywhere, thinking that I'm hiding something in my back. And this was very humiliating for me. And they gave me a pink pajama to wear, And I was trying to say thank you. And by mistake, I touched, I touched the body of the officer. And straight away, he said, take your dirty hand off my body. Don't, don't ever touch my body. I remember that this is their mother. So they put me to the prison cell. And it was a very small, uh, very uh, fading light there to, to, to let the officer to observe anything wrong happening in the cell. during the night. Uh, I was in this state of Yaqeen 
that I'm going to get out because I had a journey in a week's time with about 15, 16 people from Islamic Cliff going to Libya, Niger, Chad, and Mali uh, at that time. When I was there, trying to pray all my prayers, Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Aisha together, I only asked Allah one thing, one thing, one thing, with what? Please, Allah, let me sleep. I didn't ask him to release me because I believe that I'm going to be released uh, next day. By the morning, the telephone rang quite a few times for my employer trying to come uh, to talk to me. And this anger very much the police or the, the prison officer said, Who are you that I walk three times from the telephone station to your cell to ask you to come in? This telephone did not ring for the last year and it rang three times because you are here. Who are you? Then after that, actually, I, my, 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 uh, my lawyer came and took me to the airport. Uh, with, the, uh, with the officer, with the security officer, to meet the same uh, security officer in the airport. And we started this negotiation between my lawyer and the security officer in the airport. The security officer wanted to send me back and say that actually uh, I don't allow me to uh, go to inside Canada and I, I voluntarily should go back. Uh, the lawyer said, no, don't, don't do that. Ask him to expel you. To not, to, to not allow you to go there. Then after this tussle between our lawyer, my lawyer, and uh, the security officer, the security officer decided at the end of the day, said, I trust you. I trust that you are honest man, but that's why I will let you in Canada to carry on with your work, and I will ignore this report. I was happy, but shocked as well. And our first meeting, in the, of the board meeting of Canada was in one of the restaurants to discuss the future of Islamic Leaf Canada. Next day, I went to see the office of the Deputy High Commission, of the British Deputy High Commission, and they explained to him the situation. He was so angry that they put me in jail, they said you can put you inside a room to wait for the, uh, the next shift for the, for the security officer. And he advised me to ask him to bring uh, the file from the Canadian government. When they brought the file to ask maybe a month or later after that, I found that on Saturday, that actually he said, on, on the same day that he said, that the report said that I was in Albania or was in Egypt, I was in the American embassy in London, actually visiting the uh, council general and getting my visa to go there. Here, the, the, the message then after that, that the yaqeen in my heart that I'm getting to get out was untouchable. That's why I did not ask Allah to release me. Ask Allah, very simple, I want to sleep. The second thing after that, as a reward from Allah to me, I was called on the same day, which was Jum'ah, to uh, give the khutbah, the second khutbah, in uh, the Toronto Islamic Center, so it was downtown Islamic Center, and I was talking about Hazrat Bilal, radiallahu anhu, and in the meeting, in, uh, sorry, in the, in the congregation was somebody African, very tall. At the end of the day, I discovered that he is Hakim, one of the top American basketball player, and he became a donor of Islamic Leaf afterwards. Yaqeen creates you a process if you use it for your dua. A process guided, controlled, and directed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save you, wherever you are, and whenever you are. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.